reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. So in today's version of Acts of the Apostles, uh, we heard about this conversion of Cornelius and a group of Gentiles. Um, When Cornelius, the centurion, converted and became a member of the church, they were members of the circumcising party who were very critical of this. The circumcising party was that sect of Jewish converts to Christianity who believed that you had to be circumcised in order to enter into the faith, which we could talk about a lot more, but that comes up in Acts 15. Uh, For today's purpose, I just want to point out some significant things about what happened. Uh, First of all, there are many people who disagree with us as Catholics that St. Peter was the first pope. And one of the reasons they say that is because in Acts 15, when this very debate comes about, it seems to many scholars that it is St. James who actually comes up with a final decision. That is not true in the least. It is very clear throughout the Gospels that Peter has the prior place, right, amongst all of the apostles. He has a specific specific authority. And what we see in Acts in terms of this vision that he has is that God reveals to Peter in a dream, not to James or any of the other apostles. He reveals to Peter first. Sometimes we might even think about St. Paul as the apostle to the Gentiles, and indeed he was. But again, first, God appeared to Peter in this dream. And in the dream that Peter had, he saw a sheet coming down from heaven with various unclean animals in it, so reptiles and pigs and the like. So some people will call this the the pigs in a blanket vision, right, of St. Peter. But the deeper significance is obviously that these foods are no longer considered unclean. That in the new covenant, there are no dietary restrictions. And this is not that hard to understand because all of those dietary restrictions came about in the book of Leviticus, which for the most part is now erased in the new covenant. The Levitical covenant was just a conditional covenant. It wasn't supposed to last forever. But Peter is the one who has this vision. Now, something else that I think is interesting about this vision that Peter has is that when Cornelius, this Gentile, converts, it is not just Cornelius who converts, it is his whole household as well. It's significant. Again, in modern Christianity, many people wonder why we baptize infants, why we baptize babies and children who can't make the decision for themselves. Well, presumably, in Cornelius' household, There were not only many servants, but also probably many children who were baptized into the faith. And the last thing I think that is significant about this vision is that St. Peter, in some ways, he is like a new version of Jonah in this story. 
So you guys might recall the story of Jonah, right, being swallowed up by the fish. Jonah, when he was told to go and preach to the Gentiles living in Nineveh, the capital of Assyria, Jonah happened to be staying in Joppa. This is the same town where Peter received his vision. So Jonah, because of his prejudices against the Gentiles, right, instead of going to Nineveh, he went the complete opposite direction. Likewise, with Peter here, he was also reluctant. When God told him to kill and eat those unclean animals, right, Peter refused, and God had to insist. So in some ways, Peter is like a new Jonah as well. Something even more striking about this image of Peter as the new Jonah is that if you know the rest of the New Covenant history, right, in some ways, it is like a new Jonah. One of the things that was striking in the Old Testament was the vast conversion that came about when the Assyrians encountered Jonah. Even the king himself declared a day of fasting. So likewise, for many of these early Christians, they were also surprised at just how quickly so many of these Gentiles converted and entered into the church. So a great thing for us to think about today, right, is who are those people in our path, in our life? Who are the Corneliuses waiting to receive the gospel? But not just waiting to receive the gospel, but waiting to give themselves over to it more completely. Many of us have different Corneliuses in our path, and we should be praying for them and nudging them along. All of us should have a list of people already that can come to mind to ourselves. Who are those people? Who are those Corneliuses waiting to come into the fold? 